What's up, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome to this very special episode of Outside the Trenches. And we've got a special guest here, and he might not be a Kansas City Chiefs, but he did help take down an AFC West opponent last Thursday night and somebody that I had a chance and was lucky enough to spend some time around last year in Browns running back Dearness Johnson, the talk of the NFL for the last 48 hours with your performance, man. Uh, first of all, I just got to ask, like, how have you had have you had time to process the performance on Thursday night and figure out like just how special that was? What have the last 48 hours been like for you? Man, it's it been crazy, man. Like my family just super excited. Everyone around me just excited. Uh my hometown is hometown is exciting and stuff. Like it's a great feeling just to go out there and just to, to get a chance to start, you know, your first start and go over a hundred yards plus and and score a touchdown, man. That's a that's a, that's a dream come true. You feel me? Like it's crazy. I as somebody that that talked with you last year, and for anyone who's listening, we did a documentary with the Ernest last year. I uh, had a chance to spend a couple of days with him during the Browns' bye week last year, and then went down to Immokalee, uh, Florida, uh, his hometown that he's got yeah. a lot of pride in. They've got a lot of pride uh, for what you've done, and, and went and saw Edger and James, somebody yeah. that you're close with over the years. Um, and your high school coach and everybody just, you have a crazy story. Anybody who's, who's listening to this podcast who hasn't watched it, go to the Let It Fly Media YouTube page and watch this documentary. Andrew, Tom, Ben, Billy, Evan, all those guys who were a part of this story uh, and myself with Let It Fly, like it was special to be a part of. And, and those guys are phenomenal at what they do. But I got to ask about your family, because like you said, he was 22 carries, 146 yards and a touchdown. You're the first Browns running back since 1970 to have that many yards in a first career start. I love these superlatives. I want to keep putting them out there because I know that they just absolutely blow your mind. But for a guy who's always, whenever he's been given an opportunity, you've taken advantage of it. And it's just a matter of getting that opportunity. But yeah. before we get into the football stuff, I got to ask, how's Jasmine? How are the two? How's the new baby girl? How's your son? How is everybody handling all of this attention and everything that's going on? Uh man, Jasmine's doing good. Uh, the kids are doing great. You know, my family's doing good. Uh, now it's crazy. Like when, like before, like going out any place or anywhere, like nobody really knew who I were, who I was, and stuff like that. Like, I I just got done eating at um uh, a breakfast spot, and all you see is like people just eyeing me down, saying hi, nice game, and this and that. Like it, it's crazy that you know if I, uh just. A lot of people recognize me and stuff, and you know everybody's you know taking a well, you know we just embracing it and stuff like that. Yeah, it it's fun to get not that we know each other really well, but to get to know you a little bit because you're more like introvert, like at least from the experience, like yeah. you're not the story and doing the documentary wasn't necessarily your idea. So I was curious, I, like how <laughs> you would handle all of this attention because uh, it wasn't necessarily like, hey, let me tell your story, and you were just like, here's everything. It was yeah. like, hey. I know there's something here. Let's pull this out of you. And I just, how cool is it to walk around and feel the love from Browns fans? Cause you've seen it on social yeah. and you had seen it last year. You had the Dallas game. You had different times where you stepped up. It wasn't like fans didn't know who you were already. Yeah. But, uh, how, how has that part of it been for you with the fans and the, the added attention? Man, it, it's, it's been, you know, it's been crazy. You know, I'm just, just got to continue just being me, man. Just continue to keep my head leveled up right the right way. And, you know, a lot of fans want to take pictures. I you know I still be me. I take pictures no matter what. You know, so they want to take pictures. I take pictures. But you know, I just just I just gotta continue being me and don't change nothing at all. When I looked at your numbers, I was curious because it seemed like every time you've gotten a chance that you've put up numbers. I mean, you're 25 years old. You're averaging five and a half yards per carry in your career. You've got 62 carries. You're averaging 6.2 yards per touch, and this isn't surprising from a guy at USF that. The all-time leader in scrimmage yards. So, like, you would say whatever you want about numbers and athletics and this and that. Like, at the end of the day, it's about production and putting up numbers. And you have been doing that, and your teammates noticed that. And that was another thing that was really cool to see is the coach Stefanski after the game, yeah, like giving you the game ball and seeing the love from your teammates. Yeah. And like, I've seen enough of those videos to know that like that is complete, genuine love and support. Yeah. What did it mean to you? And what have your your teammates been like? What have Kareem, Nick, and those guys? How have they showed you love when you finally got that opportunity? Man, it's it's been a great feeling, man. Just to just to have the whole team just 
pour water on me, just surround me and hug on me and jump on me. Like, because they know, man, they know how hard I work just to get here, man. They know my story. They know know how hard I grind and practice every day just to, just to make ends meet. You know, they, they know everything, man. It just feel great. And Nick and Kareem, man, those guys always motivate me. Even, like, before the game, man, they say, you're going to have a good game, man. Just go out there and be you, man. This is your opportunity, and you got to make the most of it, you know. And that's what I went out there and did, man. I just try to make the most of the opportunity given. And, and it, you know, it happened the way it happened, man. <laughs> like, you can't ask for no better way than that. I got to ask because I've had a chance. We've messaged a few times since, you know, last year on Bucky during the season. But uh, what did the – what was the impact and – when the documentary came out and even over the last couple of days, and it's kind of been re put out there uh, and people have started circulating again, what was the feedback for you uh, from obviously from friends and family, but just from, you know, fans and, and young people that, you know, may take something away from your story. Have you felt, or have you heard feedback from people that, that saw your story and were inspired by it? Yeah. Like, like the day we did post it out and, and, and put it out there, like, the whole, like, everybody in the facility, like, man, like, that documentary, like, that's a tough documentary. Like, I respect you a lot more. Like, guys like Ma, Gary, and everybody, those guys, like, man, like, I respect you a whole lot because, like, you really, it, it really was a slow grind for you, man. Like, even, like, I, I watched it, I, I just watched the, uh, the video not too long ago with, uh, with my son. We were watching it and stuff, and he said, Daddy, it's going to make me cry. I'm like, man, like, it's crazy, like, he said, this is sad. Like, it's going to make me cry. I'm like, man, ain't nothing but hard work, man. So it's it's crazy. It's a blessing, man, just to, just to share that video, man. I'm glad you guys did that and just to put a video out there and just show what what it took for me to get where I'm at. You know, like you say, man, the, the journey continues, man. It, it, it doesn't stop where it stopped at. You know, it continues. So we just we steady okay. writing it. Yeah, you keep you keep adding chapters and keep doing good things with that. Anybody who's listening that watches that documentary and wants to support you, slow grind, go to your social media channels, go buy some some merch. And I saw that you guys have a brand ambassador. Yeah. You guys are yeah adding yeah. people to the slow. What's all that about? Uh no, nah, right added, before we recorded. Yeah, no, nah, we just added a guy. His name is Jay Ward. Uh I know him. I know him for a little a, a little while. And you know, I just feel like he got all the character just to, to be a part of. Like, you know, he's he came from the bottom, you know. He always had the the work to get where he he got to, you know. He had to grind and get to LSU, and that's what he did. And uh, now he's out of LSU making plays, man. You know, making plays out there, and uh, that's so that's what we did. You know, we just trying to, you know, push, you know, push the pair, you know, and get guys yeah. aboard that we feel like that uh that can make a difference with the slow grind. That have uh you know just they just have that slow grind in them. Yeah, it ain't a T-shirt. It's a concept. It it's is. A, it's it a is. Lifestyle. It's definitely it's a concept. mindset. It's. It is. It's not like you say. It's not a T-shirt. It's a mindset, man. Like it's a mindset. Like slow grind, stand focused on the ultimate goal. The process doesn't come fast. It takes time. Like it's a mindset. Like you can apply it with anything in life that you do. Like you gotta go with whatever you you got. You know you can apply it to it. So what's ne- what's next for you? Obviously, besides prepping for the next game and getting, I know how you guys mindset. I know you're already thinking about the next game and not worried about it. But um, where are you at? What's your mindset? And, and how's how's the baby girl? I should ask that from the beginning. How's the baby girl doing? Oh, the baby girl is doing good, man. Like I had her doing training camp, so it was. I had her up mm-hmm. here doing training camp, so it was tough for me, man. Like I was barely getting any sleep. Like I was up like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> You know, taking care of her and stuff like me and my girl that shift like do uh do night shift shifts and stuff and it was tough man just taking care of her then having to go to practice I'm like I had I never <laughs> drunk coffee a day in my life like <laughs> I never drunk coffee a day in my life like I've been been drinking a lot of coffee lately like I just started <laughs> drinking coffee but no nah, it, it's great man she's doing great man she's adorable man uh everyone loves her you know, she met a brother for the first time uh, this past weekend, and you know it's one of the best feelings just to see them, see them uh, meet each other, and you know they're doing great. Yeah, I'll say, uh, who all was at the game? Like, you have a lot of family that were at the game, and and what was that moment for you after the game when you finally got to see you know your family after your performance? It's crazy, like it's crazy how it all played out because everybody been talking about they want to come up to the game like two or three weeks ago like so I, they wanted to come up to the thursday night game so i i just uh 
but but uh they booked the flights for the Thursday night game like two or three weeks ago. They did that and I got the tickets and stuff ready. Then come Monday, like they found out that I'm starting that I'm starting in the game. And like they said, couldn't get no better than that. That they come to a game where I'm starting. And then for me just to go out there and and put on put on what I did, and and for them just to be there to like their first game experience like that, man. Like it couldn't get no better than that. I told them, man, ain't nothing but God. You feel me? It ain't nothing but God because it happened perfect timing. Like yeah. their first game, and I'm starting, and I go out there and have a day. Like it's crazy. That's amazing. It, it, truth is, That's truth crazy. is crazier than fiction. You can't it's, write this stuff. That it's is crazy, man. Like they did not know. Like, like they just came up just to come up just to see the game. Like they did not know I'm gonna start. Like that's the crazy part about it. Like how you talked about the LeBron tweet after the game, and that was amazing. I it's cool when stuff like that happens because everybody got to see your like actual personality in the way that you are, where it wasn't just like this media answer that you get a lot, like there's a genuine reaction. But besides the public one that everyone saw, LeBron, like what was it didn't have to be a celebrity or famous, anything like that. What was the most impactful message that you've gotten over the last 48 hours from somebody that, that it meant to you, some meant a lot to you, whatever they said about your performance, your story, whatever it is. I'm sorry, say it again. It broke out. I said, has there been, what's the most like impactful message or tweet or somebody who's reached out and said something to you over the last couple of days? Like what's the one that's meant the most to you? Because uh, we all kind of saw your reaction to finding out LeBron had tweeted you. Is there anyone else that's reached out or sent you a tweet or a message or even a teammate coach said something to you or just you're like, I'm going to remember this for a really, really long time? Um, It was so many. It's, it's, it's hard <laughs> to even it's hard, it's hard to even pick out one. It was so many. I mean, uh, one that did stood out, like my girl took the time out the, the, the right alone message. And just just to display like everything that I've been through, like she she took the time out just to write a whole message, and I I, I really felt that one. And just um, I don't know, just different people in my inbox just messaging me and just saying like, cause they know what it took for me to get here, and they just they just saying how inspired they are and just how I motivated them just to keep continue on chasing the dream and stuff. Like even like grown ups, man, like. Just seeing how I motivate them, like it's, it's just a blessing just to be in this position, man. I can't even lie to you, I can't. And I can't lie to you. I told you this when I was down there. I've told you, told you through text messages that I took something away from your story. I couldn't have grown up. I told you this when we sat down before we started interviewing that I couldn't have grown up any differently and any differently of an area. But I could take something away from your story, your journey, and and apply it to my own life in the slow grind. So I wear this shirt like once yeah. a week, whenever it's clean, yeah, I throw no, this on. Yeah, it's a reminder man. for me that no, it something is. doesn't, something doesn't go the way you want it to. It doesn't have to come fast. It's, it's a process. Things don't come easy. Like you say yeah. it, it's stuck in it my is. head and I play it, it over is. and over and over again, man. It's it inspiring is. for sure. Yeah. I tell a lot of people that every day, man, like even some of my family members, they complain or sometimes they complain. I say just, Last man, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen at the right time. Just be patient and stuff like that. I just tell a lot of people, man. I just just try to keep everybody positive with the slow grind, you know. And now you're putting up numbers that no running back in 42 years has done in Cleveland. That's the uh, that's the crazy. Thing. That's the crazy thing about it. Like I didn't like I knew I I I didn't know like I broke any records, but on the sideline I had like Nick Chubb telling me like Nick Chubb was telling me like. No, you close to this. Like he like he said, you gotta get a hundred. You gotta get a hundred. I said, okay, okay. He said, you're like 15 yards away. And I ended up breaking out for a long one. And he said, you gotta like, but I did not know I was the first running back. Like, that's you know, that's a blessing. Just to be the first one to do something like that. That's that's a blessing, all thanks to God. Cause hey, I don't that's crazy. I like that the whole world knows you as a fisherman now. Like that is the yeah. headline of every story that's out there. It's you've yeah. got that thing. It's unique. It's different. And people will remember you by it. And I, 
I told you before, like I got teary eyed the last carry, like the last like 20, 25 yard carry that iced it in the fourth quarter because everybody knows you're running the ball. You got it. You bounced to the left. You juked out the defender and sealed it. And I got teary eyed just because I know what that moment must have meant to you and your <laughs> family. Or yeah, everything. Gonna, like. Yeah, that just gave me chills. Just now. I'm not going to lie. Like I didn't know how. I was just out there playing. Like, I was just out there just playing. Like, I didn't know, like, how big it was until, like, after the game. Like, I was just out there playing to try to help the team win. But just to go out there and, and do that, man, and still win like that, like, that's, that's major. Dude, in a city like Cleveland where they're just blue-collar, hard-working people, like, when they showed the crowd shots of the fans just, like, physically, because it's a different game, like, and his Chiefs fans, like, we watch Mahomes just do Mahomes thing. He throws the ball all over the field, and that's great. And it's nothing nothing about the Chiefs here. But just there's, like, a different deal when, like, you run the football. And, like, you just insert your will against somebody. And to have you do that in that stadium with those fans in a game that me meant a lot to yeah. the crowd. Like, you guys are right in the thick of it. Like, that means something right in the teeter-totter part of the season. Uh, you got a backup quarterback like it. That game is going to be remembered by fans, and to see the reaction of the fans being so excited about you, Baker didn't play, and then Kareem was out, Nick was out, and you're basically just like, "Don't worry about this." <laughs> like, don't worry. They talked about it on the broadcast where Stefanski wasn't worried to the broadcasters when they asked him in the production meeting, like, "Hey, are you worried?" And they were like, "Nah, like <laughs> we know what we have in Deere, and it's like we're going to be fine." You get that win, man. For AFC West Broncos, like that helps the Chiefs, like. I love it. It's special. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, man. It's, it is. I might just sit here for like the next two minutes and just keep rattling off stats and numbers to you. They're going to blow your mind because I love seeing your natural reaction uh, <laughs> to what to what you've done. But the one that sticks out to me, you're 25 years old and you're averaging 6.2 yards per touch and you don't have a lot of tread on those tires. And I'm excited whether you continue it in Phoenix or excuse me, continue it in Cleveland, wherever you end up. Maybe Kansas City. I can say I think I can say that because I don't work for the team. But wherever you end up, man, I'm going to be rooting for you. And I know people that follow your story are going to be rooting for you. We talked about that. We did that documentary that this yeah. transcends football and what you've done, and everyone can respect that. Um, so before I let you go, man, what's what's your mindset now, and how can people continue to support you and follow your journey and be a part of what you're doing, whether they're a Browns fan or not, they can still be a Dearness De fan. You know, my mindset, you know, it still stays the same, man. Just to keep my head down and just keep working, man. You know, that was great what I did out there, you know, uh, this Thursday. But, you know, I just got to feed off that, man. Whatever, whatever opportunity I get to go out there and make a play for the team, you know, I just got to seize that moment. I got to make it happen. You know, that's always my thing. Every opportunity I get, you know, I just got to capitalize on it. So that's what I'm going to keep doing, you know, keep doing that. And just people who want to follow or, or – Keep up with the journey, you know. You can just follow on my social media. It's all the same, Dearness Johnson too. And uh, just you know, just, just, I'm just keep being me. Just continue to just to do what I do. Just you know, stay level headed and just, just be me, man. It can't change. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Browns running back Dearness Johnson, spending some time with you, time with us here on Outside the Trenches. If you guys. End up back in Kansas City. I'm going to get some Jack Stack barbecue for you there at the hotel. If you guys can get out, whatever you got to do, I'll take care of you and your guys. Get you guys some good Kansas City barbecue when you're out here, man. But thank yeah. you so much again. I, I This is bigger than football and your story yeah. and everything. If people want a, a good dude to root for, um, you're the guy. And so anybody who's listening, support this dude. Uh, it, one of the good ones, man. So thank you so much for your time. Continue to kill it. And hopefully end up back in Kansas City just so I can get you guys some barbecue and watch you continue to do your thing, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, BJ. And tell me, uh, you can go grab some merch also. Okay?